Last time on Sailing Solianus. How amazing is it going to be to have this thing in the water? A heck of a lot to do before then. We thought we had found our boat, but things went south and the deal fell through. The purchase was contingent upon Jack. Without him being able to finish the woodworking, there's absolutely no way that we're going to make it out of the Great Lakes this summer. Sort of are left with no options, but now to look for another boat. What you doing? Um, actually, you caught me. I'm reading Katie and Jesse. On a boat? Their blog, yeah. I finished my drink. Are you tipsy? Mm, no, I don't think so. But I haven't stood up, so we don't really know. I am. <laughs> From that one drink? I told you anything about rum. I get drunk. <laughs> After our deal to buy the Morgan fell apart, we jumped on our computers and started the search all over again. We found three boats we liked, made a few calls, and lined up to see them that week. It ended up being a little bit like Goldilocks and the Three Boats. The first boat, a Pearson 38, was in rough shape. This footage makes the boat look good, actually. The second boat was a Southerly 35. We had first heard about Southerlies from Paul and Cheryl Shard of Distant Shores. They have swing keels so you can beach them, and every creature comfort you could possibly ever want. But there was way more bells and whistles than we would ever need. And the price was high too. The last boat was a Tartan 37. The owners had just listed her that week and were still running the rigging as we arrived. People say when you find your boat, you'll know it. We thought we had felt it before. With Tokrimo, with nice pair. As soon as we walked up to the dock that morning, there was something different about this one. Yeah, but we how, knew. Did, how did we know? How did we, we knew it was our boat. <laughs> we just knew. The boat was in great condition. So that was number one. The layout felt right. It felt not like it was made for us, but that we could live in it easily. There wasn't anything super weird about it. Yeah, like, it was clean. There wasn't years and years and years of many different owners putting different systems into the boat. It smelled nice. It's always been the boats where we've met the sellers that it's clear that you can see they love their boats. And those are always the boats that have looked the best to us. So when we arrived that day, the first day that we saw the tartan, and Jeff and Linda were there, they had just finished all of their spring upkeep on the boat, and the boat looked absolutely amazing. There was something about it. Yeah, maybe we're a sucker for aesthetics, but yeah. it, uh... You could tell she was cared for. We went home that night and wrote an offer. You know what's cool? It's cool. If we do decide to put a full bimini on here, mm -hmm. we could completely connect it because our traveler is up here. Yeah. What you looking at? So, so look up in there. It's the hull and deck joint. That black stuff is flexible. Really? This boat was known for like its unique yeah. 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 The music never turns off in here. It's funny. Why does it never turn off? Why? Yeah. Uh, because he's got satellite radio and he turns it on at the beginning of the year and it never turns it off. Oh. Maybe because I'm realizing how ignorant I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't feel this way with the last boat. Yeah. Why is that? I don't know. Is it because this boat's like in the water and like ready to go? Maybe. And if the surveyor says, yeah, 
good to go. That means it's in our hands now. <laughs> <laughs> survey day started out great. It was beautiful. And then as soon as we were ready to take it out for a sea trial, a cold front moved in and the wind started gusting. Once we got out there and got the sails up, it was actually really cool to see how the boat handled in 15, 20 knot gusts. survey came back in Bristol condition. She's been well kept indoors for most of her life uh, for six months of the year. I'm sure after we have her for a little while I might have slipped a little bit. Yeah, Bristol means what? Not lived in. Pristine? <laughs> <laughs> Excellent condition. We're buying a boat in a half hour. Officially. Like signing the papers, handing over a bunch of money, so never spent this much money on anything other than a house. Technically, I guess this is our house. It is our house, yeah. So it's the cheapest house we've ever bought. That's true. What are you pointing at? <laughs> My boobs, apparently. <laughs> Slow camera drift boobs. <laughs> Take one. We've been waiting 10 years to do this. Yeah, right? you know, I was actually thinking about that. It was 2006. It was 2005 when you were in Australia the first, oh, the time, first time. When I first totally fell for sailing after you gave me the embarrassment of mangoes. Yeah, but... and we went sailing in the wet Sunday. The yeah, first time. I suppose it's been 12 years then. When did we do our week long trip? Our week long trip was in 2010 when we bareboat chartered a catamaran. So that's been seven years. Yeah, and that that's what sealed the deal for sure. We have been planning and scheming to get back out on a boat and relive what was the greatest week of our life. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And we are now a half hour away from the start of getting back there. I think so. So where are we? We are just a few miles north of Waukegan. It's where we're going to close on the boat. The boat is kept in Racine, Wisconsin, 20 miles south of Milwaukee. Yeah, on Lake Michigan. Um, what kind of boat are we getting? We are getting a Tartan 37. She is a 37 foot sloop with a centerboard. With the board up, she drafts only four feet two inches, which is gonna be very awesome 
um, because this winter we hope to be cruising in the Bahamas. And also considering we need to get to the Gulf and we decided to take the Mississippi. Because the river has quite a bit of current, the shoals are constantly shifting and it's just, it's good to have a much shallower draft if you can. Tartans have sailed all over the world. Uh, there are, are a few of them who have circumnavigated. In fact, this is an interesting fact. The first solo circumnavigation uh, by a deaf person was done in a Tartan 37. No kidding. He has, he has a book. When was that? <laughs> Last year or like 50 years ago? No, like, I don't know, probably 10 years ago. My Tartan facts only go so deep. <laughs> that? That is a blank check <laughs> with our boat's name on it. Oh man. We just bought a boat. <laughs> oh, we are boat owners. Oh my gosh, wait, wait, let me, let me show. Look at it. How official can this get? Should we go see it? We should go see the boat. Can you see the boat from the We can see the mast from the bridge. There's the mast. Oh. You can see the cover. Yeah, you can see it right there. It's our new home. Ah. Kirk, we're going to our boat. Our boat. Our boat. Not the boat or their boat or maybe the boat. We're going to our boat. How cool is that? That's pretty damn cool. Here it is. It's the tallest mast around. 